This apparatus is to enable you to determine the phase equilibrium between two solvents and the liquid vapor equilibrium of this binary system. It uh, looks a little complex, but it's not all that bad. The boiling chamber is down here. The liquids will boil. A vapor will come up here, and a temperature be taken, and the vapor will run back. We need to have a condenser to make sure the vapors don't escape into the atmosphere and will, in fact, condense as uh, liquids. Now, at the moment, this actual working apparatus is wrapped in fiberglass tape for insulation purposes. So let's look at one which is not wrapped, not actually working, but it'll let you see what's happening. This is the apparatus without the insulation on it. You will put liquid into, this is the boiling chamber. And if you notice, we have a resistance wire heating element here. Um, you need to make sure that there is always liquid in the chamber before you turn the electrical wires on, or they'll fry. When the chamber is full and heated, the liquid will boil, and the boiling liquid and vapor will move up this tube here, it's called a Cottrell pump, and will spray on this narrow tube here, which is um, a place for a thermocouple, a thermometer, to sit. So the liquid sprays on the thermometer with the vapor, and we can take the temperature. The liquid will drain out through a trap apparatus and back into the bottle. The vapor will leave, go upwards, and will be condensed, and the vapor trap is here. Let's look at a schematic diagram to actually walk through what will be happening. To talk about this in a schematic sense, you will fill the boiler with one of your liquids. There is a heating element, and once you turn the element on, the liquid will boil. The level of the liquid needs to be towards the top of the chamber, beginning between where the curve begins and the bottom of the tubing. The liquid and vapor will move together up through here and spray on the thermometer. This chamber is actually a separator. The liquid goes down and fills the trap and then drains back into the boiler. You can lift that and taking a dropper, you can sample the, the liquid phase. The vapor phase goes out the top, is condensed, and comes back to fill the vapor trap. And eventually, the vapor trap will fill and go back in again. But again, you remove the cap, check out a sample with a dropper, and you can analyze that. You'll be doing the analysis by refractometer. Let's look at the apparatus now and actually put some liquids in it. You get your solvent from this flammable storage locker. Take the appropriate bottle, and don't forget to close the doors of the flammables cupboard behind you. And now we've got the apparatus, and we'll start filling it with liquid. One of the first things to do is actually turn the condenser water on. It doesn't need to be flowing hugely fast, but there does need to be a flow of liquid. Do also make sure that it's plugged into the power outlet. I'm going to be using uh, one propanol, but your TA will talk about which particular liquid to use to start off with. I'm going to fill the chamber, and the first thing, of course, to do is make sure that the tap at the bottom is closed. Now, I've poured some of that into this beaker. You can pour through the condenser and this will drain in. Some of this may take a while. It may be faster to pour in directly through one of the traps. You may recall I said the boiling chamber needs to be full. You can't heat unless the element is under liquid. You also don't want it too full. That's why the wrapping of insulation, it has a hole in it here so that you can check the final liquid layer. Okay. 
still not finding. Oh, there it is. May need a little bit more here. Okay, here we are. And there is the level of the liquid inside. And I do need to actually empty the traps at this point. So that we can start off with them empty. Now, sometimes when you're trying to empty the trap, the long dropper just tries to go straight down the middle. It may be helpful to try yeah, bending the tip somewhat. There we go. Right. So I'm now ready to start heating. And I do that with this knob. Just turn it all the way up to the top. It turns out this is about 7.5 amps. And you may notice it starts bubbling here almost immediately. Now, it's not yet boiling, but it will be very shortly. Two other things while we're waiting for this to come up to temperature. We need, of course, to turn the thermometer on. And please rem it's battery operated, so please remember to turn it off again when you're finished. At the moment, that's reading 24.9. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera or not, but it's certainly room temperature. Nothing's happening yet. The other thing to realize is the caps on the traps, one of them has a pinhole in it, and that is the one that goes on the vapor trap. You may end up with a vapor lock if you don't have a pinhole in it. So this one is solid. The vapor trap is has a pinhole, so it's slightly open to the atmosphere. And at this point, we wait until the boiling is happening. It's about five minutes later now, and we're actually boiling. You can see quite vigorous activity happening here. And the level in the liquid trap is flushing up and down. And we're up around about 87.4 degrees, 87.7. So we're measuring the boiling point today in this apparatus with this thermometer using isopropanol. Now, at this point, we're starting to get some condensation happening and liquid accumulating in the vapor trap. This is actually the slowest experiment in terms of experimental time because the actual boiling does take time or every time. Um, it's quite doable, and the numbers are easy to crunch, but this does take some time. We now need to wait, and the criterion is enough liquid in this, the vapor trap, to run a refractive index. So you need um, two or three drops. You need about that much in the bottom of the dropper. And once you've got that, then you are ready to move on. You boil the sample. You wait until you have got enough condensate in this trap and then you take samples from here and from here, the liquid trap, and read the refractive index. So we've now got a reasonable amount of condensate in the vapor trap. There's always enough liquid in the liquid trap. And so we can stop heating. Just turn this down. Everything will stop immediately. At this point, I'm going to need a second dropper. You take a sample from the liquid, the vapor trap and the liquid trap and read on the refractometer. I'll do that, first of all, with the vapor and take the refractive index. You will remember the refractometer from last year. You open the jaws of the refractometer and put your sample on the lower trap prism. Close it again. Make sure you only use plastic droppers, glass droppers can scratch that. Bring the light arm up and then look through this ocular and you will see an X-shaped crosshair. As you adjust this large knob on the side, 
you will see a dark and light separation moving up and down. You get the dark and light separation right into the center of the crosshairs. At this point, you do a secondary adjustment with this thumb wheel and turn it until you get the best focus you can. At one end, you'll get red and fuzzy. At the other end, you'll get blue and fuzzy. In between that, you'll get a nice sharp line. Once you've got that nice sharp line, you may need to readjust this to get it exactly in line and push the switch on the other side down and you can read the refractive index. This one happens to be 1.3830. You need four decimal places and if you can't remember, the instructions are always here for the Abbe refractometer. Now I've done one data point. At this point I swing the prisms open, take a Kim wipe, wipe off the prisms here and taking the other dropper, take a sample from the liquid phase, put it back in there and read again. Now you would hope that these two would be the same because it's pure liquids. They won't be as soon as we start adding the second liquid. But this is how you determine the composition of your two phases. While you are waiting for this, you will also generate a calibration curve. You take your two solvents and read them, uh, the refractive index of pure solvent A and pure solvent B. The refractive index of a mixture of two solvents is a direct function of the mole fraction of the two, a ruler straight line between pure A and pure B. Construct a calibration plot to translate the index of refraction of your mixture to mole fraction of solvent B or solvent A. As you are collecting your data, you'll have ordered triples. It will be temperature, refractive index of the vapor phase condensate, refractive index of the liquid phase, um, and which you can then translate into temperature, fraction of solvent A and fraction of solvent B. That's two data points for each reading. Now that we've got this ready, we'll take a second solvent and put it in. And what we need to do here is take a drainage beaker and a graduated cylinder. The first thing you do is drain out. The first volume is about one mil. So you drain out about a mil. Measure how much you've taken, but it's not particularly accurate. Your accurate readings are coming from the refractometer. Then you take a second solvent, which I need to fetch. And again, with another clean solvent, add about the same amount. The best place to add second solvent is directly into the liquid trap. Now, I know from years' experience that that, that two small squirts is about one mil. You should, in fact, measure that. And now that I've added a small amount of my second solvent, I turn the heat up and start it boiling again. You continue to do this, drain some liquid, uh, add some more of the second solvent, boil, take refractive index readings from the two, um, and you will move your way across from pure solvent A to about 70% solvent B. Once you have finished taking those readings and the proportions for the liquids are in your protocol, then once you've done the last one, drain all of the apparatus, turn the tap open and drain it. Then once it has finished draining, put a small amount of the second solvent in to rinse everything out, drain that and then fill it up with the second solvent 
and start again from the other end of the phase diagram. That's how to use the liquid vapor equilibrium apparatus. Two things that I need to say. Once you have got the liquid, I'm not going to let that drain now, but there will be a waste bottle for this experiment. Make sure that your solvents, when they are done, go into the waste bottle. They do not go down the sink. Thank you very much. The other is, when you have finished, just leave the apparatus empty with the taps open. Do not repeat. Do not try and wash it with water or any other solvent. If you put water in here, it becomes a third component to the mixture, and uh, you'll get very peculiar results, or rather the next person will get very peculiar results, and we have to wait until it's completely dry. So just drain the apparatus, rinse with solvents, and leave it to dry in the air. And that's how to run the apparatus for the liquid vapor equilibrium. Once you have finished, don't forget to turn the, drain, the cooling water off and unplug your apparatus and make sure that the refractometer is switched off.